Council meeting for April 29th, 2021. Um, today's going to be a little different than our normal just council meetings in that um, it's not so much a presentation, but a question of does anybody use that? So uh, by way of background, just, you know, it's intended, as you can tell by its very name, to be pretty small um, and easily comprehensible. We want to keep the number of concepts in it into something that you know, you could essentially learn over a weekend um, and then you know, get more familiar with as you use it. But the idea is it should not be overwhelming and large. It, over time, um, it grows as new entities get added. Uh, but, you know, we find that not all of the additions prove to be useful. Uh, and so occasionally we take an opportunity to prune just back a bit, take some stuff out. Um, now that we have the, the GIST Council, um, you know, we want to be able to bring in the community's input as part of that process rather than relying solely on an internal deliber deliberation. So, um, you know, today's session, we're really not going to be a lot of slide based presentations. This is going to be discussions and questions. Um, we encourage everybody to uh, offer an opinion, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, let's also not bulldog some particular point. Uh, you know, let's, uh, you know, give everybody an opportunity to to discuss the things that, uh, uh, you know, that, that they, they may have noted in GIST that are not particularly the most useful. Um, we're going to focus less on the classes today than on the properties, or at least uh, initially uh, in, the, in the conversation. Uh, that's because generally the classes have, um, you know, th there's been a little more thought that goes into those, um, you know, and they're either super classes for, you know, they're good parking spots for when you're building a domain class. And and so we, uh, even though there may be some things that you in particular are not using in your domain, we have found that most of the classes are useful, you know, uh, somewhere. Um, so there's there's little less scope for removing those, but you know we can we can still talk about those if if uh, if you really want to. But the properties, on the other hand. Uh, you know, some of those just seem to fall into the it seemed like a good idea at the time category. You know, we've we've put them in um, and then found that, you know, we just weren't using them as much as, as we anticipated. Uh, so I, I think those are good candidates for us to open the conversation with today. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, what we're going to do is, is we're just going to I'm going to throw up uh, a thing showing a list of the properties and another slide that has a list of the classes. Um, I've highlighted some that, at least in my experience, are less or used to kick off the discussion, but that does not mean that we can't discuss any of the properties, um, you know, or any class. Uh, if you really have your heart set on on saying, you know, why the heck is that class there? So, um, any questions before we dive in? Um, oh, uh, I forgot this point. Uh, I do have Protege open in the background. We can open that, you know, to look at definitions or, or you know, uh, parent-child relationships between the classes, super subclass things. Um, and um, as we're going through this discussion, uh, let's try to articulate what the criteria are that we're using for considering discarding something. You know, the fact that it is less reused um, is not necessarily the sole criteria uh, for these. So um, particularly by the, you know, um, well, really at any point in the discussion, um, if, if some criteria that you think you're using uh, solidifies for you, um, speak up and because I'd like to record those criteria as much as any of the other um, you know, suggestions we have about what to pair out. So, all right, now any questions before we move along? All right. So, uh, here is a list of the object properties 
um, in just 9.7, which just came out recently. Um, these that I'm highlighting in purple, uh, they are related to the Internet of Things uh, sort of systems view of the world. Those are pretty new um, in GIST. They, so consequently, we know that they are not used much yet. Um, so uh, I figure they should figure less in the discussion. Um, but these are not in yellow. These are ones that, you know, uh, in my experience, are are ripe for discussion and getting rid of them. Um, and so, go. <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 if, if you came with a list, if you came with a list of ones you wanted to talk about, um, just uh, sing I'm out. Freaking out already, Dan. <laughs> um. I think uh, I just want to say I think some like I see multiple can and multiple player. They they sound kind of like arbitrary, but I think those are critical to the um, units of measure. And okay, have, I'm sorry. Which ones? Uh, at third column, multiple can, multiplier, numerator. All of those are related to unit of measure. Okay. Um, and something that would would be interesting if you haven't done it already, but um, you know, for any candidate that we consider, like I don't really know that we need this just look at the usage, right? Because if something is tied into other, to a class a definition, I think it, it's got more justification for sticking around than something that's not really yes. used anywhere, you know? Right. But um, just, just a cautionary one that some of those are actually tied. I think if you did it with multiple tire, multiple can, you'd actually see that they're used in some of the unit of measure stuff. Okay. Um, okay. And might I, I think I, I, I thought I had checked to see if they were, you know, if things were used Okay. in any of the formal definitions or, or whatever, um, you know, uh, maybe some of these slip through, slip by me. However, I can see, you know, those two, um, particularly when in an industrial, um, you know, setting uh, might might be more appropriate. It's um, yeah, and anytime you deal with unit conversion, really. Okay. The whole point of, I mean, that's how you relate kilograms to grams or Right, you know, tons or whatever. Okay, all right. So, so those stay. We might take those those ones related to unit of measure, give them a special asterisk, and say you know, th th yep. those might have a good reason to stay, just because there's a holistic approach to units of measure. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna That's all I want to say. Bop out here, and then um, so we Dan, can just comment. take that out. Yes. Yeah. Um, one thing that I've, 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 I've early on when in my use of just I made the mistake of looking around at a property and saying, oh, and then I look in just and see if it's used anywhere, and it really isn't. Um, but then I thought, well, maybe we don't want it. But then the real question is not so much does it used inside GIST, but is, is it used by enterprise ontology? So I started yeah. looking across other things. And so multiple can is, isn't really used anywhere except for in the unit stuff. But if you create a bunch of units, then you do use it. So that's something we have to be careful about. It's an easy mistake to make. Exactly, exactly. Um, so oh, there's one other thing. There's mm -hmm. one other thing, a generic um, point. I notice it with just allows. I've used just allows before, but really um, it's it's really there for semantic purposes to give a sense of what a permission means. So it's not a property that I've ever used, but in early on, just uh, Dave was thinking, let's give everything good semantic definitions. And so a permission is based on this notion of allowing. And so while I've never used allows in actual fact, and I, I'd be OK to get rid of it, um, but I think the principle behind why it's there is an interesting one. It, it gives some meaning to the the concept. Yeah, yeah. So there you are. Um, in, in the yeah, it allows the behavior. Yep, exactly. exactly. So I've never really modeled it that way. I've never found it a circumstance when it was convenient to do so. So it is a candidate to, to get rid of it, but it but we want to be careful about getting rid of stuff that's there for semantic meaning just because we're not going to use it for triples. OK. Yep. It's tricky. I, it's a funny balance. I don't I don't have a good view on how to make that decision, but it's just right. Yeah, uh, but, it, but it seems uh, kind of to your point, it would seem that if you're trying to characterize a, a kind of permission, it would require saying, well, this is the kind of thing this permission allows. Right. It's hard to semantically specify it without that. But. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, if you're going to use it, then you use it with a behavior. And it just behavior is just initially it was things like uh, in manufacturing, a, a cutting behavior, a, you know, splitting behavior, a joining behavior. But I've used it for other things like medical um, ontologies, you know, an operation, uh, a procedure, um, things like that. Right. I've never, I've never actually used it. Yeah. So, so how about prevents? I mean, that's sort the of the flip side thing. of the coin. The same thing. It seems like if you had one, you'd need the other. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. very good observation, Phil, because prevents is, is used in the exact same way that allows is used. It's used to define a restriction. I forget what we call it now because restriction yeah. is an all term as well. But right. it's exactly, it's the flip side of allows, prevents, and it's used in exactly the same way. Yeah, and yet, and yet saying, you know, if, if we were to reframe, um, you know, this as, you know, uh, and not just, a lot, uh, just, um, what was it, restricts or just, uh, what, what was the uh, property? Um, prevents. Yeah. Uh, and not just prevents. That's not, that's semantically not the same thing. So, that's true. you know, um, so, you know, yeah, allows, um, uh, you know, I can, I can see, you know, I can see that. And again, from a semantically, in 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 order to create this this restriction, um, yeah, I can see where it's necessary. But, um, you know, it it's it's use in the broader world, uh, as you say. You know, you you haven't used it, um, so uh, I think I guess at the moment we should. Go ahead and uh, mark that one for keeping. Um, what, one thing we might do, Dan, just a proposal, is just take a maybe a straw poll right now. The general principle of having something that's there to help define the meaning of something, even though you're not going to use it as a triple. Is that something that people have a strong feeling about? Get, yes, I really, really want that. I Or I kind of like it. It's sort of nice. I don't want to get rid of it. Or I think, that, I think there's a very clear application in triples, and that is law. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I think and I've used it for privacy modeling privacy. Yeah. So but but I think, Michael, I mean, I'd be a strong proponent to say um, anything that is used in a class definition, I'd put in a separate set right now and say, if you want to get rid of that, you've actually got to untangle class definitions. So I would suggest that's, true. that's a good point yeah. that we say, you know, uh, for the first tier, I'd look for things that we've identified as not used much that also aren't used in any class definitions because those would be the easiest to remove right um and and, and you know beyond just easy uh, i i like the rigor of some of these class definitions so i you know i think we would i would vote to take a lot of care before we remove something that is part of a class definition okay not that we can't do it but so so to sort of shift that conversation to you know um along those lines um has birth date um, it's used in the definition of living thing. That's um, and yet, interestingly, I found that in the business setting, um, has birth date is not a particularly useful um, property. What can you explain that? Um, so, uh, you know, uh, most of the um, most of the times when you know when I've had uh, uh, instances dealing with people in a business setting, um, their their birth date did not factor into the 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 triples, you know, the in, into the, the use cases. Um, the, yeah, the, but that's probably I'm because stealing. that's that's private information, right? Because that's not. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't contend that yep. there's no use cases. I'm sure there's tons of use well, cases where yeah. companies use birth dates to, uh, to, to, um, <laughs> let's say, to make hiring, firing decisions, or figure out who to whom to um, tell, prompt to re-up their 401k. I mean, there, there's lots of age considerations that. And it's absolutely necessary. Sorry. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely necessary in medical applications. Mm -hmm. Birth date is an identifying factor. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. And also when dealing with insurance and not just health insurance, but life insurance, I, I can think of a hundred reasons. Okay. 
Very nice. The same so, applies. The same applies to death date when we have historical data. Now, what I would question here is whether they shouldn't just be pulled up into their super properties. Um, end end of a person. <laughs> uh, yeah, actual. Do that again. I will end you. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it sounds like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger in Terminator. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Uh, is the consensus then that, uh, you know, death date also stays? I would think so. That would be my reference. It, it doesn't get a lot of use, but. OK, I, is, I, it, I think from the medical perspective, we use it quite a bit, especially from mm -hmm. research, uh, both birth and death, although ultimately what we're what I think people are really interested in are what's the age of a person at a point in time? So, mm. but we do that calculation all the time. Yeah, well, when you get old enough, you can't remember people's ages. You can only remember their birth dates. And you can't <laughs> ask either. Yeah, right. It's it's probably there for completeness, uh, but it sounds like it's also useful in some cases. When you're old enough, you don't care. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely for any kind of encyclopedic purpose. Lots of things like that. Okay. Hey, I mean, so I, don't I, I need remember to, my, to drop off. I don't even remember my grandson's age. <laughs> Sorry, who has to drop? Uh, I, Dan, I was going to say I have to drop shortly, but I did. I but I was, um, I you know, these all look uh, you know reasonable to me, except I was concerned about has subcategory, and um, I, I, uh, oh, I kind of freaked out at that one. So. Yeah, about it going away. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll say, I mean, I, 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 I guess what I'm saying is that I'd, I'd like to hear the argument for it, but it just seems to me that's all we really have to capture any kind of hierarchical relationships between categories. Right? It's Actually, also in a class definition now. It's in a taxonomy class definition. There you go. Mike, so I'd right, probably keep right, it. Because we've had one client um, who had already internally used SCOS Broader to do that hierarchical connection. And so I kind of like the idea of using SCOS Broader. Everybody knows what it means. You can use it to link categories. Um, and so you don't need the super category or subcategory. So that's a, a viable option. You may or may not like it. One thing that you might not like is anytime you use it, it suddenly infers everything into be a SCOS concept. But I actually don't think that causes any harm. So I'm slightly in favor of getting rid of both of those properties and just using SCOS broader instead. But I'd love to hear other arguments about why that might be a bad well, idea. I, I, I am. I'm a big. Uh, I, I don't like scope broader because it's so general, right? Like, like it doesn't allow one to tease out whether one means subclass or part of or subtopic or all, or all these different things. So I'm always, um, I'm, I'm, you know, like I, I'm sort of live and let live with it when, when it's when it's there. But I, I do think I hate to give up the tools that allow me to be more specific about what exactly I mean when I say scope broader. Okay, so you're saying, and I think well, I agree. Yeah. I don't quite understand. What is the what is a part of a concept? Mm -hmm. Categories, I understand. Oh no! So what I'm saying is, Scott's broader, like you know, it's it's a generally used hierarchical relationship. Yes, but it means different things. It, like it's it's me. It it implicitly often means any of those things I just mentioned, right? So it's 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 not always so, which may be fine within a particular context. But when you when you, when you're trying to use it in, in a knowledge graph setting, you say, wait, do we mean this is a subclass of this intended to be a subclass, or do we mean like if if Scott's broader is seen used in geographical um, taxonomies, there it just means part of, right? Um, so right, I'm not saying would category say that's would more, be part of, and that's that's, that's I'm more saying. Saying <laughs> the uh, the meaning of the concept is too just right. general. Mike, I think that's a convincing argument. You know, because that SCOS broader or or narrower, you know, would be in the gist context would meet would talk about subcategorization. Yeah, yeah, I see. I, I think that that using SCOS narrower for a part is kind of an abuse of of terminology, and it's because the people who use SCOS, you know. Who use SCOS and only SCOS are probably not going to be familiar with the wider world. Yeah. Mike, that's a good convincing argument for leaving it in. Thank right. you. OK. Yeah. OK, well, uh, no, with, with that, I'll uh, drop the mic and leave. Thank you. <laughs> well, you had a nice <laughs> Good.
<laughs> okay. Um, in a similar sort of vein, we had added in, um, you know, these, uh, it has navigational parent, oh. has navigational child. Um, mm. You know, those, uh, and um, I mean, I'm even trying to remember the precise context in, with that, in which that got added. You know, or or used initially proposed. I'm not certain that it ever got used beyond that one uh, particular client instance. Um, has anybody ever used these? I have not, and they're not tied into any other class definitions that I can yeah. see. Yeah. It would seem to me to make sense in terms of. Um, well, it makes sense where you have a navigation system uh, such as. Well, these were more like, um, you know, so the, mm. you know, it's used for hierarchical taxonomies, you know, um, you know, supporting poly hierarchies. Um, this was, I think, to like capture. Um, like if you had if, if, uh, if you, the, the electronic addresses, of, you know, for these things, um, so it's similar to, but different than, you know, the subcategory, supercategory thing that we were just talking about. Right. But, but that's what I so meant by saying it's tied to a navigation system. Yeah. So the, the little breadcrumbs across the top of lots of websites right. are, are navigational yeah. in nature. But, yeah. But I, you know, I, I think uh, in the spirit of the conversation, it's just not getting used. Yeah. So. Um, it would be better to, you know, be, you know, shoved off, you know, into some uh, <laughs> other thing where we can say, if you're using GIST, consider these, you know, but, uh, but in, you know, not. Do not we still have the idea of obsolete things in GIST? Yeah, we, you know, we might do that. Um, yeah, we had that when we were modularized. I don't know if we do now. Yeah, right? we still deprecate. Yeah, there's, um, we'll put yeah. it. Just now delivers in two files instead of a bunch, but one of them is is a I think it's called just deprecation. Yeah, it's, yeah, just deprecated. But we yeah. say we're going to get rid of. We don't promise to keep the deprecated stuff around. Right, it is right. right, kept around for one major release and then removed entirely. Exactly. Right. Uh, Things like navigational parent, I would be an advocate if we decide to take it out. You know, a handful of things that we decide to take out because we don't get used very often. I would advocate having a separate thing that says these are infrequently used, but look here first before you start making your own stuff yeah. up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I probably would be too. Um, and uh, it's I funny. Agree. I just just was talking to a client about nav. Uh, we're talking about networks. You know, we have the network node, network link, and then they were talking about a case where it was a hierarchical network. So the funny thing is, I've uh, but I looked at these definitions. They mentioned taxonomies and not networks. But um, so you know, I've never used it. I have a case where, sorry, there's a helicopter flying over my head. <laughs> um, I've never used it, and 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 I'd even be open to getting rid of it because I I doesn't look like it gets used much. And uh, it may be that I'll have a client that suddenly needs that in a month from now. But there again, you know, if if it's not used much, it they can go in their domain ontology if they need yes, it. Yeah. So I yeah. mean, we use this at SNP Global specifically for UI partitioning and layout. So, or because navigation, right? But it, it doesn't mean that we couldn't have used something else. It's just this already existed and it was exactly what we were looking for. But I definitely don't think that this is broadly used. Well, broadly or not, I think that's a strong argument. You know, user interfaces are all, Paragol user interfaces are all over the place now. Fact, should be an argument to keep more of that we're doing more yes. and more of that i wonder if um if we were to keep it and this would be a separate issue we could create a just issue for that is the, i'm looking at some of the definitions that which seems to talk about taxonomies and things i wonder if it's actually a more general property than that you know it could be used for networks or or you know other things and then if we keep might we throw an issue out there to say consider updating the definitions that uh, the textual definitions, or do you yes, think definitely. it doesn't really matter? Definitely update them. I mean, okay. it's when I first heard of it, I immediately thought of navigational interfaces. Yeah. It didn't even occur to me to think about taxonomies. Yeah. I think this was, this was, Dave has, we, you know, we've taught 
the, our DBBO class for many years, and there's a slide in there, or a handful of slides that talk about different kinds of taxonomies. And the Yahoo taxonomy was famously just kind of a hodgepodge of, it was very navigational. That's exactly what it was for. If, you, if, you, if you're on a camping, if you're on a website about camping, then maybe you're interested in Dutch oven. But a Dutch oven is not a camping. It's just if you're there, you're probably interested in the next thing. So navigationally, it's relevant. Um, but then super category is, as Mike Poole pointed out, it's a very different meaning. It really does mean more like subclass. Yeah. Yes. I think Dave's idea was, hey, you know what? These things are out there. They're very common. They're pretty pervasive. So let's kind of have something to make that distinction. But then okay. reality is we never ended up using it very much, except for that one time uh, with one client, as Boris mentioned. Well, so then, you know, um, I'm hearing that we've we haven't used it in the past, but we've got some uses of it coming up. Well, we know we are in fact using it once, but we yeah. have not done very much. Right. So D again, don't focus on semantic arts too much. You guys are the steward yeah. of just exactly. Know, that's why that's here. that's why I was thrilled that's a good <coughs> when when we set up the just council. This is exactly one of the things that I had anticipated we would be doing, you know, uh, as a council. This getting the outside viewpoint. So, uh, all right, so then uh, keep it. Is that what I'm hearing? Is there any way you can maximize that slide on your screen? It's the print is very small for me. Um, well, I'm gonna list. Can you pull up your, I've, so, yeah. so you have a, if you have a big screen, you could blow up the screen. Well, yeah. also in, uh, in Teams, you can hold the control button and roll oh, your yeah. mouse wheel yeah. and you'll do a local if that's not something you had tried before. I For use sure. that a lot because I do it on a no, laptop. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And on a Mac, but yes. Yeah, we don't actually have to see the uh, the header for this anymore. There. Um, so, um, do, we, do we keep this? Has anyone else used it on this console outside of Semantic R? Well, we have the S&P that was just mentioned. That's what I mean. Semantic R is used it for one of our clients. Oh, I didn't know that was the same thing. Yeah. All right. Um, well, out of what do we got, eight people? The answer is probably no, but... Um, but it makes sense to me, and I think it's something that will only grow. Yeah, I've, my experience, just, again, with our clients over the years, we haven't done too much, you know, actual driving applications and UIs, but we're starting to do more and more of that. So that's, right. that's true. And again, for keeping it in. Right. So, <laughs> books, you know, books are increasingly ebooks, and every ebook has a navigational interface. Yeah. Which well, has nothing also, to do with subject matter. Yeah. As we begin to um, instantiate the uh, data centric architecture, I, you know, I guess, you know, when, once we start talking about actual navigation uh, across screens, I guess it does make sense. So maybe let's just go ahead and take that one off the table. We'll keep that one. So we're learning how good GIST is, right? Uh, yeah, in a way. <laughs> Everyone's like, no, we need that. No, we need that. That's kind of cool, actually. Better than you knew. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Before before I direct the conversation you know, towards the next one, I wanted to talk about. It. Is, is there is there one that somebody was just mm, dying to talk about, and whether I've got it highlighted or not? No. Okay. Well, what, actually, what's, yeah, what, make what gives with altitude? Hmm. What's the story with altitude? It's just part of lat long out. Yeah. Okay. Words, if, so yeah, if you want to model, yeah, we already have um, geo points and geo things, and they essentially have lat long and altitude. Sure, I understand that, but why is it yellow? Oh, why is it considered taking out? I hear you now. Because it, yeah, because it's just not used much. Uh, again, in 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 my experience, it's not used much. Do you have latitude and longitude in there or no? Is it that you find so people doing latitude that's, and longitude? That's the other altitude? thing I was thinking about is, you know, uh, we've got latitude and longitude as, um, uh, you know, as data properties. So why isn't altitude 
a data property. Yeah, altitude is is a, this is an extent and 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 just speak, but it's a magnitude of it's an extent. Well, that's true. Yeah. Whereas the other one is degrees. Now you could convert. You could have radians. We've done this for some of our clients. There's a unit called radians, and you can convert it to degrees. So you could have them both be. It probably would be a good idea to have it be all consistent. I think I hear your question. You're saying that lat and long are just datas, but altitude is a object. Well, altitude is a magnitude. Yeah. Well, one of yeah. the other two magnitudes. Yeah, they could be, and they probably should be degrees or radians. Probably yeah, I think they live oh. and die together. Degrees. I mean, if you consider planes, for example, as as objects in a flying, right. currently flying planes. So here's the here's the thing, you know, when uh, when we have these sorts of conversations uh, internally uh, around some of these things, and I always, you know, insist on making the point that just as a business oriented ontology, um, so you know we're you know, uh, navigating an airplane is kind of outside the general scope of what we're looking for. Um, knowing the lat long, you know, the location of something um, might definitely be you know, in part of a, a business context. Um, the altitude? Much less so. Not so much. I'd be okay with getting rid of has altitude quite on. Yes, outside of something like cell towers, right? You wouldn't really yeah. Have it. yeah, that's another good point, and nobody can call that not a business. <laughs> no, but it's very much a domain specific consideration. Right. Uh, but there is a question of whether you want to convert latitude and longitude to, to a magnitude of. of yeah, units. that's that's definitely outside. I think so scope. because you uh, have but that's outside the scope of today. Yes, good point, Dan. Yeah, Thank there's some. Um, well, and and but real quickly too, um, you know the the thing. Um, you know, it's, um, uh, where was it? um, I thought somewhere we had a string thing saying that, you know, um, oh, well, never mind. Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to derail myself after saying let's not derail. Um, right, and real quickly to the, to this point, um, it is currently used in the definition of geo point. Um, I'm not sure it should be. I tend to think of geo points as lat long, and it's, since it's on the surface of the Earth, you can figure out the altitude. But just so you, so you know, so if we were to pull this out, we would have to change the definition of geo point. Yeah, and no, move I'm, I'm still okay with that. I'm still okay with that too. I think you know because at that point we're removing something rather than adding something in to the formal definition. So you know, um, the violence done to anybody is pretty. Dan, yeah. can you quick show us the definition where as altitude is used? Sure. And I'll have a quick look to see that it's great to get. Geo point equivalent to. Yeah, it's got yeah. it's saying it's got an, an altitude and a lat and a long. And I think I kind of agree. I think for most of us, we probably think a geo point has a lat along. I think the altitude is yeah, I mean, particularly, you know, if you were trying to infer something in here and you didn't have an altitude, then it's not going to infer in. In fact, I'd almost argue that geo point, because it's geo, I mean, X, Y, Z, yeah, you can have an altitude, but a geo point, in my mind, you, mm. I don't know that it even has an altitude, right? If you give an X, Y on the surface of the Earth based on the shape of the Earth, you're going to have. Yeah, I can't. I can uh, talk about where Denver is by X and Y. Do I need to also say it's a mile high? I don't. I don't know if that even makes sense. Right. Well, it does. It does. To be, to, be, to 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 just make a comment here. I think it's semantically correct. Every geo point does in fact have an altitude. Right. And if you have something right. that has a lat and a long and an altitude, then it is in fact a geo point. So I think the definition is semantically correct. Well, wait a minute. What, what about the point that is six feet above your head when you're standing in your driveway? Is that a geo point? Yes. It's a geo point, even if it's okay. on the surface of the earth. Guys, guys, remember okay. business oriented, business oriented usage. Um, and I would still say if you don't have the altitude, you're not going to infer something in as a geo point. Yeah, yeah, that, that is clearly bad. That is clearly bad. I mean, it should be part of the definition. But whether it should be a property of geo points is another question. No. So um, if an altitude is a magnitude, somebody who wants to use it can use has magnitude. 
they yeah. can't. Right, right, However, right. In other words, someone could still model altitudes. We'd just be taking it out of that definition yeah. as well as a. Yeah, just have to have a category for the magnitude of altitude. Um, so, Dan, someone asked the way here, but I wanted to point out that um, Casey has made a couple of comments in the um, in the chat that I think is relevant that you're not getting. Um, so you might want to check on that. OK, let's. Oh. This. Um, I got one more. You got a longer one. Uh, all right. So uh, this one, I, you're I, quite. I'm happy to voice it, too, and then you guys okay. don't, don't have to yeah. do it. But uh, essentially, yeah. it's just so the first one is looking at uh, so you've got a bunch of these properties, right? And I'm wondering what the motivation is for dropping particular properties. Uh, uh, in my experience, uh, the, the worry that I have with the GIST ontology is that some of these properties are underdefined or it's difficult for me to know exactly how I should be using them. Um, not so much that uh, uh, they, are, they are underused, uh, and also, I have a general tendency, uh, which I think is somewhat at odds with the, the semantic arts move. So I, I, I get if you guys don't want to track with this, but I would prefer to add more properties that are super properties that we can cluster some of these under to make it more manageable, um, rather than worrying about culling some of these. So take like has birth date, like we were talking about earlier, has death date. One of the suggestions was maybe we can just get away with actual end and actual start, right? I, and not have to have the sub property. Uh, I go the other way and say, make a time of property, right? And then cluster all these things under the time of property. And then you have the benefit that you simplify the way your property structure looks by having fewer sort of top level things. Um, but that might also take some pressure off of needing to eliminate particular properties because it's not so worrisome if we have a domain specific property in there somewhere because it's nestled under some other things, right? So it's not gonna be distracting to new people. And it might even be good because it makes it easier to use the ontology because I can say, where would altitude live? Oh, it would live here if I do have a domain use that, that would do that. That seems to make just more friendly to me um, rather than this approach of, of color. I things. agree, it's a lot more straightforward if you do it that way. Okay, so um, just- My only issue with time of is that it seems to be inherently, um, inherently have three values, you know, the time there's a, there's a value that's something like beginning or end or birth or death or, you know, whatever. And then there's uh, the object that is said to have this time. And then there's the actual value. That seems. Yeah. To yeah. So, so two things. One is I, I think we could say a lot about the merits of time of in particular. And there's a more general principle of just like, uh, is it good methodologically to try and take super properties rather than, you know, more fine grained uh, sub properties, but on time of in particular, uh, I think it is pretty general and it's not uh, not as useful in some cases, but basically it says this time is important to this thing, whatever it is, right? So August 2nd, 1986 is important to me. That's better to say that's my birthday, right? Uh, but it's not wrong to say Casey is linked to this date in, in, in some particular way, right? So these super properties are often less useful for direct assertions and more useful for gathering other things. But they can be really useful for querying, right? Where I can say, let's just look at IBM and say, what are the important dates for it? Just do you know, IBM time of, and get a bunch of stuff back. And I get like their company founding and like their investment dates or th things like that. And then maybe that allows me to, you know, peel back when I'm searching the data. So this is also, you know, query useful, I think. Yeah. Um, in that case, you can always have a Sparkle query that says this or that or that or that. Because we often do that in our Spark of yeah. Queries. Also, well, so, so two two quick points uh, by way of history. Um, Dave prefers not to nest the properties because people tend to forget about the nested the the, the nested properties, um, and uh, and so you want it, you wind up with in your knowledge graph a less specific, semantically meaningful property getting used because people are going for the higher level thing. Um, so, so that's why this is as flat as it is, uh, which isn't to say though, in your own ontology, you can create um, a, a property and make it a super property of, of the gist stuff, you know, and, and, you know, in your own little world, um, order 
the properties, group them the the way you would like, um, and you know, and then and then also the reasoner will behave in precisely the, the uh, method you were you were expressing. So um, those the, the, that's kind of the, the rationale for why things are the way they are, um, but also you know why you can still 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 do things the way you would like. Oh yeah, ab absolutely. And that applies to a lot of these other things that, you know, it, you know, methodologically where you're saying, should I keep this or get rid of this? Right. Um, and some people are like, I might want to use it in some sense. That's not a really good defense for keeping it just right. You're like, just make it yourself. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's hard to add additional properties. Uh, but my, my view is I think just does damage to itself by, uh, by being so flat. I think it makes it harder, harder to use and increases the variance of the way that, that people use it. Um, yeah. I agree. It's a trade-off. I, I kind of like having super properties as cognitive groupings to make it easier to open up and close the property hierarchy. But D Dave doesn't like it, and there's genuine trade-offs either way. Yeah. But I kind of lean toward Casey. I prefer to have some bundling. I mean, it sounds like Dave's argument proves too much. It it's it it would equally well say that we shouldn't have hierarchical classes, because after all, when you fire a protege, That's, it's all hidden. Yeah, that's a little bit less, um, you know, the, the case, although, you know, uh, in, in <laughs> the way Dave likes to do things, um, he, he would, in fact, um, leave things very flat and then just uh, write a restriction, um, you know, such that when you ran the reasoner, everything would arrange itself. That, that would be his uh -huh. preferred way to do things. Uh, thing, but there's nothing about... I'm sorry. Another thing about the property hierarchy is Dave makes the point, and it's a valid point depending on how you're going to use things. If you have, say, a time of property, but you've got start and end and actual start and plan start, and you've got a dozen properties, then you're going to have a real strong proliferation of triples if you do inference over the sub property relationship. And so Dave wants to avoid that when you do inference and materialize. He's like, I don't want to triple or quadruple or quintuple the number of triples I have. That's one of his arguments, one of his reasons for not wanting to do that. Yeah. Whether that's valid in your use case or not is a different question, but that's what Dave's thinking is. Okay. All right. Um, we're down to the last five <clears throat> minutes here. Um, before uh, I, I throw one more, you know, uh, property into the ring. Um, I just did want to give uh, if anybody had an, uh, a particular class they wanted to question um, whether or not it should stay. Um, you know, we've got five minutes to, to deal with it. I mean, if you're going to get rid of altitude, you should probably get rid of geo volume. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I forget exactly what I've the difference is. Segment used either. <clears throat> I I don't see the difference between geo segment and geo route. I'm sure there is one. I just don't remember it. Yeah. Isn't there a route uh, of several segments? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we use that in uh, in military applications sometimes. The uh, geo segment. Yeah. Okay. For uh, uh, routes. Um, route, border, I, routes, know, I, borders, I, things like route, that. I oh. can, no, we definitely, you know, it's again the business context. The geo segment, the way it was defined, um, I guess was, you know, um, single portion of a geo region which has been divided. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it's not a I segment. was probably thinking of geo route, actually, not geo yes. segment. You're right. Geo segment's just the one, one little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas, you know, geo route, you know, an ordered set of geo points, yes. that's, the, you know, that's, that's definitely got a, got a, a, a use, but so geo, set, the, geo volume. Yeah, geo volume can go, but geo, geo segment, now that I'm refreshed on what it is, um, is, is more like things like, you know, the territory of Alabama within the United States, not the no. state of Alabama, but it's territory. No, I don't think so. Is it like a linear? That's a region. A segment is literally just a single point to another single point. Right. Um, it's like almost a building yeah. block for a route and possibly a region. Yeah. I'll look at region. Yep. It's something that GIS systems care about, and I'm, I'd be okay to not have it. Just yeah, I'd be there. okay without geo segment, except it, um, it is part of the geo route definition. 
But have we ever needed geo route? I have hey, never. Can you bring up geo segment again? Okay, sure. That's for me. Uh, so there's geo segment. T telecom or, you know, railroads or electric yeah. power. Roads and highways. Them. Highways. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was okay, so, it's, so yeah, segment is a, is a line between two. Yeah, two. just two. It's, yeah, uh, between two. Whereas a geo route could, I mean, you know, if you've only got two points, this would still cover it. Yeah, you could make right, no, a geo route an ordered route. set of uh, an ordered down collection down to geo of segment. geo points. Right. <laughs> Go down to geo segment. Geo segment. So the segment would be the degenerate case of a route. Yeah. And yes. you know, we could take we could take this restriction, add it, you know, you know, um uh routes are and, generally and included in as part of the, you know, part of this restriction and be able to get rid of segment. Yeah. What I I've seen is it's an ordered segment. collection of parts. An ordered collection of geo points is usually the way they define a route. That's right. But I think segment was originally meant to mean because I was the one that 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 uh, wave your wave this stuff under your noses after looking at some geographical ontologies. Um, is uh, is meant to be a, the piece of a route that goes from a to b and then the route may go from a to b to c to d like the, <laughs> yeah yeah it's so, the building block of a route so it, yeah it's the building block of a route and it should probably stay in for that reason and there should be a, a part to whole relationship between geo routes and geo segments hey boris do you remember wkt do they just do an ordered collection of points for a route for WKT, yes, it is an ordered. It, it's essentially a, a list of lat longs and parentheses. Right. Yeah, I was just trying to, to try to figure out if, if I mean, trying to take a cue from someone else, you know, some other standard that did it need a segment in particular, or do they consider that a gener degenerate case and basically say as long as you have an ordered collection of points, you're good. Uh, okay, so so that WKT might be one example of of that. Yeah. I don't think they had a separate segment, did they? Right. So, so WKT tries to not do things as a RDF structure, sure, sure. but really just to do it as it as a text micro format with a type. Yeah. So the, I wasn't advocating that, but just wondering, did they find the concept necessary to define a route? And it sounds like they did not. They just made it no, a collection. No, a route is just a series of points. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm okay with pulling segment in that case. Okay. All right. Um, we are uh, on the hour. Um, thank you, everybody. This was uh, um, really useful, at least from my standpoint. Um, I, just as a, a quick uh, consensus, it, would it be worth doing this again at some point? You know, either continuing to talk about the things we didn't get to, or um, you know, uh, just I would very much like to talk about the things we didn't get to. In fact, yeah. I would. I yeah. think so. If we have a, the next great, meeting yeah. like this should be taking up all the remaining properties in order and seeing the yellow properties in order and seeing if there's arguments for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Then we will uh, look to do this again. Right. And, again. and just from the stuff that I saw mentioned, the flip side of this discussion, which is what do you think is missing, uh, is a good one as well, because right. I've heard a couple of mentions of that. Yeah. Much harder and, and more open-ended, though. That's <laughs> sure, absolutely. Yeah, yes, that's hard to do that's that just why I agenda. say we should we should deal with removals first. Sure. Yep. <laughs> All right. Like maybe we'll eventually have a what have you always needed? Like every time you go to a client, you always have to put this in, and you're like, maybe that's a candidate. But I agree, we can push that off till later. All right. All right. Art is not finished when you when when you've added everything you could add, but when you've taken away everything yes. you could take away. Yeah. There's yeah. a musician right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, have a good day, and we'll see you again in a month. Ah, sounds good. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. bye.